Hi, I'm Sarah and welcome to Rich Textures Crochet on YouTube. Let's crochet something beautiful today. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the Windy Pines mittens, which are these mittens that you see right here. I have crocheted them with the Karen Times Pantone uh, yarn, which is a bulky weight yarn. You will see when you look at your label, it has that number five there on it. So if you're looking for a yarn to substitute, I would uh, go in that direction, find a bulky weight yarn. And also for this pattern, you're going to require a six millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors and a yarn needle for weaving in your ends. A free copy of, written copy of this crochet pattern can be found on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. The link will be provided for you in the notes for this video. While you're here, please don't for forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which I like to update weekly with crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. Now that you have all your materials together, let's get started. So you will notice when you first pull out your Karen Times Pantone yarn, if that's the yarn that you're using, you're going to see that it is braided, something like this. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up that skein and you will see that each of the colors actually make uh, are separate, separate skeins there. And uh, before I begin, I like to ball them all up into just little balls that helps keep the yarn uh, from tangling. The other thing that I did once I found my colors and balled my yarn is I assigned each of my colors a, a letter. So I have color A, color B, color C, and color D. And if you're looking on the written pattern, you will see when I change colors. You will need two of these skeins of uh, the Pantone yarn, but you won't use all of the yarn in each, uh, in both of the skeins. So taking my first color, which is my color A and this lighter cream here that I am using, I began uh, by working the cuff of my pattern and the cuff is worked in rows. So with your color A, you're going to take your crochet hook, make a slip knot, and begin with a chain of five stitches. For row one of your cuff, you will begin by slip stitching in the second chain from your hook and in each chain across. So count in from your hook, there's the first chain, the second chain, work a slip stitch, and in each stitch all the way across. You will now chain one and turn. Now working in the back loop only, you will continue, you will slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. To find your back loop of your stitch, you're going to look at the top of the stitch and you will see, I'll just take my hook out there, that there are these little V's here up at the top of each stitch. Your back loop is the strand of yarn that is the furthest away from you that is your back loop. So when you're working in the back loop only, you're going to insert your hook under that loop that's farthest away from you only, and you're going to work your slip stitch. And you're going to do that all the way across, always working in the back loop. Just like so. Once you come to the end of the row, you're going to chain one and turn. Now for the rest of your cuff, you're going to continue to repeat that row two, slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch all the way across. And you're going to repeat that until the cuff of your mitten uh, measures approximately seven inches. Okay, so you're just going to keep doing that chain one, turn, working in the back loop only, slip stitch all the way across and continue doing that until it reaches seven inches. I'll work a couple more rows here and then I'll show you how that cuff is looking. So 
so you can kind of see it there. You'll have this ribbing effect and it has quite a bit of stretch to it. Okay, so continue to repeat row two until you have seven inches and then meet Okay, me so here. now I have worked my seven inches from the beginning there. And at this point, you're not going to fasten off. What you're going to do is you're going to take the two small ends of your cuff. So this is the cuff here. You're going to take the two small ends and you're going to hold them together. Now we're just gonna crochet a seam across. You're going to start by chaining one and then working in the uh, back loop of each side. So of the first thickness, there's that one and then the back loop only on the other side, you are now going to work a slip stitch all the way across. So back loop only of each side, work a slip stitch. Still no need to fasten off, you can if you'd prefer but there's no need. Now you're going to take your cuff and you're going to turn it right side out so that seam is on the inside and that is your cuff there. Okay this should be nice uh, and sewn together. Now we are going to begin the body of the mitten and the body of the mitten is worked in rounds and you're going to continue working with your color A. Round one you're going to chain one and you are going to work 26 half double crochet stitches evenly all the way around. So as you can see there are no clear stitches for you to insert your hook in order to work around so you're just going to kind of make it up as you go uh, and you're going to work your 26 half double crochet stitches. If you are having trouble getting them evenly spaced out I would place a stitch marker about halfway and then make sure you work half the stitches on one side and half the stitches on the other. So to work your half double crochet stitch, you're going to yarn over, you're going to insert your hook into the cuff, you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. That's your half double crochet. So work 26 of those stitches all the way around your cuff. When you come back to the beginning, you are going to join in the top of that first half double crochet stitch with a slip stitch. When you come back uh, to that first stitch, you've worked your 26 half double crochet stitches all the way around. You're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch. You'll also know that you're going notice that you're going to begin round two with uh, color B. So at this time I like to change the colors of my yarn and there are a variety of ways to do this. This is just one way that I like to. So instead of joining in that first stitch with a slip stitch using color A, I'll actually drop color A. I'll pick up my color B and instead of pulling through color A, I will just pull through my color B. And now I'm all set to begin working with it. I will drop that color A and then weave in my ends once I'm finished. So now working on round two with color B, you're going to chain one and now working in the third loop, you are going to half double crochet all the way around. To find your third loop, what you're going to do, this is the front of my work, I'm actually going to turn my work forward and take a look at the back of my stitch. When you look at the back of your half double crochet stitch, I'm just going to pull my hook out here, you will see that you have this top horizontal bar and underneath of it you have this other horizontal bar here. This second horizontal bar, that's your third loop. So that's the one you're going to be working on. I will show you once again. So this is the front of my work. To find your third loop, you're going to turn your work so the wrong side is facing you. And you have these two horizontal bars, one at the top of the stitch and one underneath. The one underneath is your third loop. That's the one you're going to work under. So to work your half double crochet in the third loop, 
you're going to take your new color A, you're going to yarn over, and in that third loop, that second one there, you're going to insert your hook, pull up a loop, and complete your stitch, your half double crochet. And you're going to do that all the way around for a total of 26 stitches. So yarn over, find that third loop, that's that second horizontal bar, insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through. Now as you work in the third loop all the way around, you will see this happening to your top of your stitch. Uh, let me just do a couple more stitches there. What you'll see is the top of that stitch is going to be pushed forward and it's going to give you this sort of knit uh, looking seam all the way around. Okay, so it just pushes the top of that stitch forward and gives you a fun little bit of texture. So work in the third loop, your half double crochet stitches all the way around and when you come back to the beginning you're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch. At the end of round two you're going to join with a slip stitch in the first stitch. Now you'll have to pay attention to the written pattern at certain points you will actually turn your work and at other times you will not. At the end of round two that is one of those times where you're going to turn your work. So you're going to just work in the opposite direction. For round three you're going to begin by chaining one and now we're going to work in a little bit more texture into our mittens. You're going to start by single crocheting in that first stitch followed by a triple in the next stitch. Oops, sorry, for your triple you're going to yarn over twice, insert your hook in the next stitch. We're now working under both loops once again. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two more, yarn over, pull through your last two. And then you're going to repeat that single crochet in the next stitch, triple in the next. You're going to continue to repeat that all the way around your mitten, single crochet followed by triple, until you come back to the first stitch, and then once again you will join with a slip stitch in your first stitch, and just as you did at, uh, at the end of row two, you're going to once again turn your work. So repeat that single crochet followed by triple all the way around. When you come to back to the beginning, join your yarn with a slip stitch, and then turn your work. Okay, so now I've come to the end of round three, I'm going to turn my work, and you can see that those triple crochets were pushed forward to give you a little bit of texture. And uh, these are sometimes referred to as faux popcorns because they're not quite true popcorns, but they give you that same effect. Round four, you're going to begin by chaining one. And now you're going to work one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. One half double crochet stitch in each single crochet and triple. When you come back to the beginning you're going to join your yarn with the slip stitch and at the end of this round you will not turn your work. For round five you are once again going to be working in that third loop so you're going to start by chaining one and you're going to work in the third loop Half one, one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. So once again to find your third loop, I would yarn over, you're going to, this is the front of my work, I'm going to take a look at the back, there's that top horizontal bar and then the one in behind is your third loop. Insert your hook under that horizontal bar. Working in the third loop, work one half double crochet stitch all the way around. When you come back to the beginning you're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch and once again turn your work. For row six you are going to work that single crochet triple combination uh, 
uh, once again so you're going to chain one in the first stitch work a single crochet followed by a triple in the next stitch repeat that all the way around when you come to the beginning once again join with a slip stitch and you will turn your work so single crochet followed by a triple in each stitch all the way around now for row 7 you are going to be working under both loops and you are going to begin by chaining one and then half double crochet in each stitch all the way around to the last two stitches. So half double crochet in each stitch all the way around until the last two stitches. So that's a total of 24 stitches. Once you arrive at your final two stitches, you are going to chain two and then you are going to skip those next two stitches and simply slip stitch in the top of your first stitch. What that's going to do is that is going to create the opening for your thumb, which you will come back to once you have finished working the body of the mitten. Now for round eight, you're going to continue in the same direction. You're going to chain one. You're going to work in the third loop and you're going to half double crochet in each stitch and each chain all the way around. So at the end you will once again have 26 stitches. So half double crochet in the third loop all the way around including in your two chain stitches. At the end of round eight, you're going to join with a slip stitch in that first to stitch, but you will see that in round nine, you're going to change to your color C. So I will switch over to my next color, just like so, pull those a little bit tighter, and I'm ready to work round nine. Now with round nine, you are going to once again chain one, and you are going to work your uh, single crochet and triple stitches all the way around. So begin with a single crochet in the first stitch, followed by a triple in the next stitch. Repeat that all the way around and when you come back to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch and turn your work. I'm just at the end of row nine, joining with a slip stitch. Going to once again turn your work. See my thumb hole is down here. Now for row, round 10, you're going to chain one and half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. When you come back to the beginning, be sure to join with a slip stitch. For row around 11, you're going to chain one and you're going to be working in the third loop once again and you will half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. So by now for the body of the mitten, you will have discovered that we are just doing some simple repeats of the pattern that we were doing before. Uh, eventually we will start to work our decrease for the top of the mitten. But for now, you will just work in the third loop, half double crochet stitch, all the way around and join with a slip stitch in the top of your first stitch. At the end of round 11, join your yarn with a slip stitch, chain one, turn your work, and you will now proceed with your single crochet in the first stitch, followed by your triple stitch in the next. Repeat that all the way around and then join with a slip stitch in the first stitch and turn your work. For round 13 you will have turned your work 
And we are now going to begin that great decrease that I mentioned uh, just a moment ago. How you are going to work your decrease is by chaining one and then you're going to half double crochet in each of the first 11 stitches. So half double crochet in each of the first 11. So there's one, two, number 10 and number 11 and then you are going to half double crochet two stitches together to half double crochet two stitches together you're going to yarn over you're going to insert your hook in the next stitch yarn over and draw up a loop you will have three loops on your hook you will once again yarn over insert your hook in the next stitch yarn over and pull up a loop you will have five loops on your hook and you will have worked over two stitches. You're then going to yarn over and pull through all five loops on your hook and your half double crochet two together is now complete. You're then going to repeat that work a one half double crochet stitch in each of the next 11 stitches. eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and then you will half double crochet two together over the final two stitches. So yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. You will have five loops on your hook. Once you have five loops on your hook, worked over the next two stitches you're going to yarn over and draw through all five of those loops that's your half double crochet two together you will now be at the end of your round and you're simply going to join your yarn with a slip stitch in that first stitch now for uh, uh, for round 14 actually you're going to I'm going to take a step back there you're actually going to switch over to your color D so once again, instead of completing my slip stitch with my color C, I'm simply going to complete it with my color D so that I am ready to go for the next round. Pull those tight. There we go. So for uh, round 14, you're going to chain one. And now working with your color D, you are going to work in the third loop and half double crochet in each of the next 10 stitches. So find your third loop there and back, half double crochet in each of the next 10 stitches. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then you're going to half double crochet two together, again working in the third loop. So the first leg of your half double crochets two together will be fairly simple by now. You can see easily that third loop, so you're going to pull up your first stitch there, three loops on your hook. And then once again, and this one, it might be a little bit trickier because you have uh, four horizontal bars there from your last two together. But again, you're just taking that second one down, insert your hook, pull up a loop. So you have five loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all five. You are now going to repeat that, working in the third loop, half double crochet in each of the next 10 stitches, and then half double cro crochet two stitches together. 
for round 15, you will have turned your work and you've chained one. You are now going to single crochet in the next stitch and triple in the next stitch for a total of five times. So you'll have 10 stitches, single crochet and triple five times. So that was one, this is two, three, four, and five. You will then single crochet two together over the next two stitches. So over the next two stitches to work your single crochet two together, you're going to insert your hook in the next stitch and drop a loop. You'll have two loops on your hook. Insert your hook in the next stitch and drop a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. That is your single crochet two together. You are now going to single crochet in the next stitch and triple in the next stitch for a total of four times. So for the next eight stitches, repeat that pattern, single crochet followed by triple. So that was one repeat. This is two, three, four. Then you will have come all the way back to your final two stitches. You're going to work one more single crochet two together over the next two. So insert your hook, drop a loop with two loops on your hook, insert your hook in the next stitch, drop a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops and your single crochet two together is complete. You will then join with a slip stitch in the top of that first stitch. Now, you may turn your work. For round uh, 16, you are going to chain one. You are now going to half double crochet in each of the next eight stitches. Seven and eight. You are then going to half double crochet two together, so yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch and drop a loop, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch and drop a loop. With five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all five. You're then going to repeat that, half double crochet in each of the next eight stitches, half double crochet two stitches together, and then join your yarn with a slip stitch in the final stitch. At the end of round 16, you're going to have a total of 18 stitches. Now, for round 17, chain one and working in the third loop, you will half double crochet in each of the next seven stitches. So that Seven. Then still working in the third loop, you're going to half double crochet two stitches together. So there's one leg and two legs. Five loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all five loops. And then you're going to repeat that half double crochet working in the third loop in each of the next seven stitches. Then half double crochet two stitches together and join with a slip stitch in your first stitch. At that point, you will once again turn your work. For round 18, you're going to chain one. You're going to single crochet in the first stitch and triple in the next. And then you're going to repeat that three times. So for a total of six stitches. So there's the one, two, 
two and three. Over the next two stitches, you're going to single crochet two stitches together. And then repeat single crochet and triple in the, uh, three times. Number three, when you come to your final two stitches, you will single crochet two stitches together and join your yarn with a slip stitch in that final stitch. You will now have a total of 14 stitches. You're going to turn your work. Round 19 is the final round of the body of our mitten. We're going to begin by chaining one. You're going to half double crochet in each of the first uh, five stitches. half double crochet two stitches together then a half double crochet in each of the next five stitches and half double crochet two stitches together Once you are back there at the beginning, you're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch. And then you are going to fasten off, leaving yourself a long tail. So you want to leave yourself several inches and you're going to fasten off. Now to close the top of your mitten, what I did was I turned my mitten inside out see that I haven't woven in any of my ends yet but I'll go back and do that after and once I've turned my mitten inside out I'm going to take my yarn needle and I'm going to simply sew the top of the mitten closed you may have your own preference for doing this but I just do like a running stitch here all the way across that. I'll do a quick fasten and then I will weave in my final end there and clip it off. Once you have done sew the top closed then you can turn it right side out again and test it out if you'd like. If I can find my thumb hole there it is. So there you go. Now we are going to move on and we are going to work the thumb portion of our mitten. To work the thumb portion, I used my Color B yarn because I wanted it to be the same as uh, the color as where my thumb opening was, but again, you're welcome to use any of the colors that you would like. Now for your thumb, you're going to join your yarn. You're going to have the right side of your mitten facing. You're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch in any spot around that thumb opening. Now for this first round, you'll notice that the stitches are not clearly marked, so you're going to kind of make your own way. And we're going to begin round one by half double crocheting nine stitches evenly, evenly around that thumb opening. So just work nine half double crochet stitches all around the opening to that thumb. So there's one, two, my yarn is a little slippery there, three, four. I want to make sure my thumb this first round is fairly secure so each time I'm going in a few uh, a few strands of yarn just to make sure that it is quite secure there 
Try to make it even so you don't have any gaps. How many do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Once you have nine stitches, you should be back to the beginning where you're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch. Now for the rest of your thumb, you're simply going to chain one and work one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. And you're going to uh, do that for a total of four more rounds. So this is round two to five. Simply half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. Join with a slip stitch in your first stitch and uh, move on to the next round. Once you come to the end of round five, you're going to fasten off, once again, leaving a long tail. And there you have it at the end of round five. You shall have completed your thumb. You're going to use the tail that you have left there and you're going to sew the top of your thumb closed and then your first mitten will be complete. Congratulations, you can go out and back now and complete it for your second mitten and uh, hopefully enjoy these for uh, a long time to come. Thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial on how to make the Windy Pines mitten. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which I like to update weekly with free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. Happy crocheting! Bye!